A portion of this video is generously sponsored by FlexiSpot. I love aliens. The Alien franchise is one of my absolute all-time favorite movie series, and if you 3D print, it makes Aliens so much better because there is a ton of models available. In fact, in the last video, we printed and painted a resin xenomorph that turned out absolutely awesome. Go check it out. I'll have a link in the description or maybe up here on the screen. But today, we're taking a look at the Uniformation GK2. It is a massive 228 by 128 by 245 millimeter on the Z MSLA resin 3D printer with a few unique features that make this one one of my favorite resin machines ever. Now, I had to find something worthy to print on this epic machine, and that's why I went with Aliens. Oh, and a huge thank you to Uniformation for sending over the GK2 for me to share with all of you. This is an awesome machine, and they've been more than patient with me while we work to fit it into this uh, schedule, so thank you. Okay, back to finding a model. I went over to gambody.com, which is an incredible place to find some of the most amazing detailed models uh, on the internet. And the first thing that popped up on the screen was the P5000 powered work loader from the 1986 movie Aliens. Now, for those of you not around in the 80s, Aliens is the sequel to the epic space horror film Alien from 1979. And I don't know how you've made it this far without watching it, but go watch it and then Aliens in that order. And in this movie, Ripley heads back out into deep space to the remote colony LV-426, where as expected, she and the Marines run into more xenomorphs, and Ripley even fights the Queen with the power loader. So today we're obviously printing and assembling the power loader, but Gambody had a special combo where you get Ripley as well for just a few dollars more. Of course I had to have them both, and I think they work together. You can print different versions of Ripley and even one that goes inside the loader. Ah! But we'll do that on another day. But I really want to. Bad. Okay, before we get started and go over the GK2 and all of its details, trust me, this is an amazing printer. You're going to want to stick around. Let me share how FlexiSpot came in to upgrade our studio. And they are generously sponsoring a portion of this video. And we're grateful for it. Creating content is 90% sitting. And for every 12 minutes of video, there are dozens of hours of planning, script writing, and filming. And as much as six to eight hours or more of editing on top of that. FlexiSpot saved the day. They came in and they sent over their new C5 ergonomic chair, which is this one, and we've been using it here in the studio for the last couple weeks, mostly to take naps in. But don't shame me for that. It's so freaking comfortable. The C5 is rated for up to 300 pounds, has lumbar support, an adjustable headrest, and reclines. And that just happens to be my favorite position, so I like that. I'll have links on the screen and of course in the description. The C5 chair is the only one I have experience with from FlexiSpot and it's been great, but they do make a wide range of other chairs as well for all sizes and budgets. Go check them out. For me, the combination of this FlexiSpot sit-stand desk and this chair has already made a huge difference on productivity for me here in the studio. It's already so much more comfortable to come in here and work for long periods of time. Okay, back to the printer and all of its details. Oh, and I'll have a $100 off coupon code on the screen. I think it's loyal and you can save yourself some cash by using it and uh, I don't know, or buy more resin. The GK2 is a 402 and a half to 405 nanometer wavelength MSLA 3D printer with a whopping 10.3 inch build volume. It uses that 10.3 inch 8K LCD display that comes with an LCD protector already installed. And I believe there's an extra one in the box too. At least I thought I saw one in there. The LCD protector is pretty fantastic. Um, when you're working with resin and you spill resin on that screen, if the UV light cures it, uh, it can ruin the screen. So those protectors make it nice, protect the screen. You can peel them off uh, and replace them and not damage the actual uh, screen itself. It has a magnetically mounted activated charcoal filter on the back that recirculates the air, helping to remove harmful VOCs and odors, of course, from your environment. Now, does it work? Uh, it's not the quietest when running, uh, but both my wife and I noticed that it made a huge difference in the studio. The resin odor was still present, but it was not nearly as bad. The massive build plate uses a heavy duty return to zero quick release lever, uh, which can be opened with one hand, which is pretty convenient when one hand is always covered in resin. The vat also uses a very innovative quick release design that doesn't use thumb screws like we're traditionally used to. It simply slides and locks into place and that is one of my favorite features. Oh, and it's a big vat. It holds up to 700 grams of resin. Yikes. Another huge feature for this machine is the resin heating system. And I know a lot of people want the GK2 for this. 
It can warm the risen printer up in cold temperatures to as high as 95 degrees Fahrenheit from temperatures as low as 50. And it can do all of that in as little as like eight minutes. Pretty crazy. Um, it has a five inch touch screen. It's beautiful and it's super responsive, easy to use. Um, typing in like Wi-Fi passwords is so much easier on these larger touchscreen uh, interfaces than these small ones from uh, other vendors. The flip-up cover is nice. It's that easily recognizable dark green from uh, Uniformation and uh, it flipped up, stayed up, and of course when it came down it sealed uh, when it was closed. It was nice. My machine came with two USB adapters, really not sure why, but installing it was simple. Um, I just plugged it in the back of the machine and the interface immediately recognized the uh, Wi-Fi uh, interface and I was able to just connect to my wireless network. Now, as for getting models to the printer, I ended up just using the USB stick and sneaker net and walking it over and pumping it into the machine um, because ultimately Cheeto Box, which is the slicer I was using for this, just would not connect to the GK2 over the network. Um, which was a little disappointing because I was really hoping to uh, like have a near perfect experience with this machine. Now, as for the print results, I ended up using two different resins for these prints. The Ripley model was printed in a Gratkit thermochromic temperature color changing resin, and the loader is printed in a, is it Jang He? J A M G H E? Don't know how to pronounce it. Nebula gray resin. And I think both prints turned out absolutely fantastic, but I did make a mistake with Ripley and I didn't realize I'd left the screen protector sticker, you know, like the protective peel on the screen protector on when I did that print. Even so, she turned out great and I'm still really surprised at how little that affected the print results. Now, here's what the thermochromic resin looks like when you apply a little bit of heat. That's kind of cool. I, I don't know exactly how useful it is, but it's kind of cool. Now this loader from Gambody is interesting. It's 27 pieces and the renders are just gorgeous. I wish my prints would look like the renders, um, but it all fit on a single build plate. How cool is that? 10.3 inches is a lot of room for activities. And that is just so convenient to just load everything at once and slice and print. Now, all of my slicing was done in Cheetah Box with their latest V2.1, uh, I think it is, their beta. And it's been redesigned and the interface is just beautiful. Now, also a huge shout out to Cheetah Box. They saw our recent videos and they reached out to us and we'll have some fun collaborations coming up soon. Um, I'll have their link on the screen um, and in the description. I think they're even having uh, some sort of a big sale through June 30th. Um, it's a huge discount and I'll have that in the description. So if you're interested, go check it out. Now, I was extremely conservative with my settings for this particular loader, and it was about a 13 hour print for all of the parts. I was like a kid waiting for the cookies to be done, seriously, when it was printing. I kept opening the lid and checking the parts to make sure they were printing okay. The parts came out beautiful, and I hope that comes through on camera. The nebula gray is amazing. Look at that depth so rich. You can, I don't even know how to explain it. Um, there's obviously other colors in there than gray, but it is beautiful. Assembling the loader was a bit of a task. Um, I didn't even look at the printing instructions. I probably should have. And uh, But there were a few parts that I had to grind down that just didn't fit together. And I don't think that that's a negative reflection on the model or the printer. Um, I think that's me just not following the instructions. But I did end up breaking some of the parts and I did have to reprint those in the middle of the night. But I love it. I am terrible at painting, um, and I'd really be tempted to spend some time to get better at it because I would love to see this one painted. Or print another and paint it, I don't know. Um, tell me in the comments below on where I would even get started on painting something like this. Also, if you hadn't noticed, this is the first time in a video that I've sat in a chair uh, or assembled something in a chair, and uh, the previous studio chairs were just not that comfortable, and no joke, this C5 chair that I'm in right now has made an amazing difference uh, the last couple weeks on how we make content here in the studio. Okay, back to the GK2 and my thoughts on it. I've shown the GK2 off over the last few months on our live streams on Twitch, which you should go check out, twitch.tv slash loyalmoses. Go. We give away filament and printers and stuff all the time. Seriously, go join. But this is the first video where I kind of put it all together uh, to share it uh, as an experience that I had. Overall, it's now my favorite resin printer to use. It's the combination, I think, of the build volume and the print quality and, of course, that user experience that put it at the top of my list. If you are looking for a heavy-duty, high-quality, large-format resin printer, this one should be on your list to consider. Like I said earlier, there are some discounts on their website and, of course, my $100 off coupon code, LOYAL. Go over there, 
check them out and let me know what you think of this machine in the comments below. I'd love to know. Thank you FlexiSpot for the studio upgrades. I really appreciate it. And maybe you can give your makerspace a little upgrade with a new chair or desk. I'll have links in the screen and in the description. Oh, and if you want to save a little bit of money, use the code C530 and you can purchase this C5 right here for $30 off. A huge thank you to our Patreon and YouTube members. I couldn't do this without you. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.